Crossrail, better known by its brand name the Elizabeth Line, is the newest cross London railway to be introduced onto the UK's national rail network. Linking Shenfield and Abbey Wood in the east to Heathrow Airport and Reading in the west, the project was initially due to be completed in December 2018. However, the project has been set back by multiple delays, notably financial constraints, infrastructure issues and failure to replace elderly rolling stock. The COVID-19 pandemic, combined with Transport for London's current financial deficit, pushed back the project further until the first half of 2022. The opening of the Elizabeth Line today, the 24th of May 2022, brings a new dawn into travel across the capital and beyond, with its opening being anticipated by many people across the world. So, I'm very much looking forward to trying out the Elizabeth Line and giving it a full review in this video. So, without further ado, it's time for me to get this show on the rails. Hello and good morning. Welcome back to another video where you join me at London Bridge Station on a very dull and grey Tuesday morning at 4.30 where I will be catching a South Eastern train first of all to board the very first Elizabeth Line service from Abbey Wood. Currently, this is the best way to get there. So, without further ado, let's get inside and get the show on the rails. In keeping with today's theme, I bought my Elizabeth Line limited edition Oyster card with me today, which can be obtained from any Zone 1 ticket machine or any ticket machine at an Elizabeth Line station. Alternatively, there are some available on eBay at ridiculous prices. Our first journey of the day is between London Bridge and Abbey Wood on board South Eastern, taking approximately 27 minutes and calling at 9 intermediate stops. Speaking of which, here's our train now which is formed of a Class 465 network pair. These trains are typically found on South Eastern's metro services in and around London and Kent, so it will definitely be interesting to see how this compares with the Elizabeth Line. However, that's a video for another time. In the meantime, our main focus is getting to Abbey Wood in time for the first Elizabeth Line service at 6.30am. So, let's get on board and do exactly that. We've departed London Bridge on time at 5.09, which is great as this means we're right on schedule to make the 6.30 departure at Abbey Wood, which is expected to be rather busy. On that note, it is now time for me to talk a bit more as to what the arrangement is going to be for the Elizabeth Line from today onwards. As many of you will know, the Elizabeth Line is not running in full from today. However, all existing TFL rail services which ran between Shenfield and Liverpool Street and from Paddington to Heathrow and Reading will be rebranded as the Elizabeth Line with the new core section between Paddington and Abbey Wood being opened today. Just over 25 minutes later we find ourselves approaching Abbey Wood and we can already see a class 345 of entry unit which is the type of train we'll be riding today stored outside of the Elizabeth Line depot at Abbey Wood. The trains were initially built between 2015 and 2019 by Bombardier Transportation, specifically for the Crossrail route. And right on schedule, we've arrived into Abbey Wood. Abbey Wood is located in Zone 4 on the travel card system, making it rather far out from central London. The station is, was previously managed by South Eastern, however TfL took it over upon the launch of the Crossrail project. As we head towards the Elizabeth Line platforms, here's a fun fact about Abbey Wood. Abbey Wood is alphabetically the UK's first railway station. Quite cool, huh? Anyways, it's now time for me to head to the station, which is actually located well below the main entrance, and it is rather wet and rainy as you can see. So, let's not waste any time here and get to our service. And here it is, 
the entrance to Abbey Woods Crossrail Station. Fortunately, there is a shelter just above the waiting ramp, so as we can see, there isn't that much of an issue waiting, although it is rather crowded as you can see. After approximately half an hour of waiting, I've received an Elizabeth Line badge to commemorate the first ever service to run through the core section. So it's good to see me starting to reap the benefits, especially as the line is starting to get really, really long to ride the first service. And a few minutes later, we're in business and ready to catch the first service from Abbey Wood to Paddington through the Elizabeth Line core. I managed to obtain the most up-to-date tube map from a TFL member of staff before the barriers. My 4am start though did get the better of me as I did drop my original map. Fortunately, I was provided a new one. And here we are at the barriers as one of the first paying customers to officially use the Elizabeth line. Oyster card tapped in and we are a go. The point to note here is that despite this being the very first service, the crowds were reasonably well managed. This is because TFL and Southeastern placed strict crowd controls into Abbey Wood to make sure that the services did not get too chaotic and busy. We do have a bit of time to check out the passenger information system, displaying a nice welcome message to the Elizabeth line, as well as the calling points for our service to Paddington today. This is despite the expected chaos from the first inaugural service. This, however, did not stop Jeff Marshall from making a special guest appearance on the first ever Elizabeth Line service. Note his purple clothing, as well as his purple streaks in his hair. Quite a nice touch for the opening day of the Elizabeth Line. Anyways, it's now time for us to officially board the first ever Elizabeth Line service from Abbey Wood to Paddington through the core. But first, a little bit of a walkthrough. The general seating arrangement throughout the train is the longitudinal metro style seating, which is useful for commuter style and metro services that the Elizabeth line operates. However, that does not also stop some airline style seating from being present. And as you can imagine, these are the most popular seats on the train and are usually filled up quite quickly. One thing I do like about these trains is the see through and walk through gangways, which make it much easier to walk through the train and prevent you from having to touch anything, which I quite like. I think I'll leave the walk through there as the train is nine carriages in length and I would rather talk through the detail of the line itself. So without further ado, it's time for me to take my seat and hit the iron road to Paddington. Once again, we find ourselves passing the Abbey Wood Depot for Class 345 units used on the Elizabeth Line branch to Abbey Wood. Straight after, we find ourselves entering the first portal located on the Crossrail core. Inside the Elizabeth Line tunnels, the maximum line speed is 60 miles an hour, although we are currently going at 50, which even then is still faster than the tube, so we're already off to a good start. I would like to make note though that 4G in the tunnel is not available, despite this being advertised as a feature of the Elizabeth line. The Wi-Fi was also very little for imagination as well, as it appeared not to be working. So again, another disappointment. Although this, the benefits far outweigh the disadvantage, the drawbacks, as we'll soon see. But for now, it's time for a know your seat. Starting with the airline style seats, these are rather firm and hard. However, considering you won't be on this train for such a long period of time, it is reasonably acceptable for the routes which it operates on. 
There are also armrests at the end of each airline style seat, which are retractable towards the end of the aisle as well as in the middle. As for the longitudinal style seats, well, these are also just as hard, if not harder. Although I would argue the fact that you are not meant to be staying on this train for that long, so it doesn't really make a difference. The armrests are also not retractable as a result, but they are a nice addition to have. There are also foldable metro style seats for those with reduced mobility, as well as bicycle users. Grab handles and poles are also present throughout the train, which do come in handy, especially as the following services which I saw after the inaugural one were relatively busy, and these were re relatively well used. Elizabeth Line maps are also present above the doors, and these replace the previous TFL rail ones. The central London tube map is also present. If you want to read, feel free to pause the video. And a mere few minutes later, we have arrived at our first stop of Woolwich, in South East London. Whilst there are no direct transport interchanges within the station itself, you can alight here and exit the station to, to join Woolwich Arsenal Station for connecting DLR services to Bank and Stratford, as well as South Eastern services to London Cannon Street, London Bridge and London Charing Cross, as well as destinations in Kent. The one thing I love about the new Elizabeth Line stations is that the architecture is rather modern, yet unique and Woolwich Station is no exception. What we are now on is the section of track between Woolwich and Custom House, one of the few instances where the core section of the Elizabeth Line runs above ground. It's also worth noting that the majority of this section of track is part of the former North London Line branch to North Woolwich, which has been largely disused since the end of 2006. We are now also passing Silvertown, as well as the site of the former station with the same name. This, this station closed along with the North London Line branch to Woolwich in 2006. However, there are business cases being fought as well as provisions being made to rebuild the station here in order to serve the nearby London City Airport, increasing the total count of stations on the new Crossrail Abbey Wood branch. Following the entry into another smaller portal, we now find ourselves at Custom House, which is where you can alight for the XL Exhibition Centre and is one of the few stations in the Abbey Wood branch that is above ground. You can also change here for DLR services along the Beckton to Tower Gateway route. I do have to admit that I was a bit sceptical about Custom House and I was expecting it to be one of my least favourite stations. However, the open air of the station is a nice change from the underground ambience that is provided throughout the rest of the line, so it is, a really good, it is really good to see. Our next station, following Custom House, is Canary Wharf, one of London's biggest financial centres, and as such, it is ex expected to be one of the busiest stations along the line that's not in Zone 1. One thing I did forget to mention is that, akin to Thameslink, inside the Elizabeth Line core, where there are platform screen doors, the doors open automatically. A lighting here connects you to the Jubilee Line, as well as the DLR from Heron Keys and West India Quay, as well as Canary Wharf. Outside of the station is a dedicated area for the Elizabeth Line, known as Crossrail Place. Following Canary Wharf, we find ourselves in our final Zone 2 station of the new section of the Elizabeth Line, Whitechapel. Whitechapel is where you can change for the District and Hammersmith and City Lines, as well as the London Overground East London and South London lines. I have to admit that out of all the new stations on the line, Whitechapel has seen the most improvements, notably the modern District and Hammersmith and City lines, as well as the new London Overground platforms. The main concourse is also a massive improvement and it definitely gives the station a much more modern feel suited for the Elizabeth line. Only a mere few minutes later, we find ourselves in Liverpool Street, which is far faster compared to what we do on the Hammersmith and City line, which runs a similar route. Liverpool Street Station is the Great Eastern Main Line and West Anglia Main Line terminus, and the Elizabeth Line platforms were built underneath the existing station. Point to note as well, here is where you can change for services to Shenfield, prior to the core being linked to the Shenfield branch, as well as the connect there's also connectivity with Moorgate Station to change for the Northern Line 
as well as the Northern City Line, operated by Great Northern. Perhaps another notable Zone 1 station is Farringdon, which not only enables you to change twice with the Hammersmith and City Metropolitan and Circle lines from both Barbican and Farringdon, it also enables you to change with Thameslink, Crossrail's north-south counterpart, which runs between Bedford, Cambridge and Peterborough in the north, to destinations such as Brighton and Horsham in the south. The absolutely gorgeous stained glass designs also accompany the station and make for a very pleasant sight as you continue your journey or your morning commute. Our penultimate stop before Paddington is Tottenham Court Road, which is located on the very east end of Oxford Street and as such is very popular with tourists. You can change here for the Central Line as well as the Northern Line's Charing Cross branch. Point to note however, if you are taking the lift here, please do bear in mind that you do get dropped down one level before you have to change to a separate lift to access the platforms. The overhead light designs, combined with the dotted patterns and multicoloured lights on the escalators, make for a very futuristic and effective design. And what we are now passing is the site of Bond Street Station on the western end of Oxford Street. Normally, we would be stopping here as our penultimate stop before Paddington. However, numerous infrastructure issues delayed the completion of Bond Street, and as such, it will be opening later in the year. And that's a wrap as we finally arrive at our final stop of Paddington, which is the end of the Elizabeth Line core section and the new section to be opened between Abbey Wood and Paddington. Paddington is where you can change for services along the Great Western Main Line to Reading, Swansea and Penzance, for example. And my overall conclusions on the Elizabeth Line? Overall, I have to say I was really impressed not only by TFL's management on the day, but also the friendliness of their staff, the efficiency of the service, and the speed at which it managed to get me all the way from Abbey Wood in Zone 4 to Paddington in Zone 1, with a total of around 28 minutes. I would say the Elizabeth Line has well been worth the four-year delay, and I look forward to using it both as a regular commuter as well as a leisure traveller. Another point to note is that you can also change at Paddington for Elizabeth Line services along the Heathrow branch to Terminals 4 when it reopens later in the summer and Terminal 5, as well as along the Reading branch. As we leave Paddington's Elizabeth Line station and admire the impressive architecture that goes along with it, I really do hope you've enjoyed the video today. If you did enjoy the video, please do give it a like as well as share it as that really does help the channel to grow. If you're new to the channel and you really did enjoy this video and would like to see more content such as this, why not consider subscribing? I upload frequent trip reports, train comparisons, as well as train journeys on a regular basis. Well, anyways guys, that's it from me. It's time for me to head home, but in the meantime, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.